Bernard Jr. And of course, Liz, and we've got our leadership eh, in the legal department. His name is Mitch Brook. For his very first day, we're talking yes. social media. Yes. Now, let's give it over to Mitch. Mitch. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, yeah, thanks again for the warm welcome. Uh, Thank you. As you might know, I'm a, a candidate legal practitioner here at KZN. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, let's talk about social media, eh, guys. Mm -hmm. At the moment, I mean, there's so much nonsense on social media, really. Definitely, for sure. Um, uh, specifically debates that we see. A lot of people attacking uh, politicians' uh, characters as well as other people. Mm. I mean, uh, we even seen Penny Sparrow last year yeah. really get uh, yeah. scared away with it. Definitely, for sure. And it is really not a cool thing to go on people biting. I always say that most people that do that are people who, I'm sorry to say, but I'm, I'm going to have to sound a little bit cruel, but people who have most of the time to do evil things to social media, it's a cruel world out there. <laughs> no, it's, it's a it's truth. True, we, people we, who are unemployed. We even see uh, like these fake, um, fake accounts. accounts. Yes. Yeah, trolls. We have trolls. I mean, us that are working, we have no time to do things like that. Who else could it be? I'm not blaming it on anybody else, but I'm just saying, yeah, Mitch. Yeah, so I mean, the reminder is when you come across these uh, malicious posts uh, are yeah. very defamatory in nature, yeah. it's quite a good idea just to you know ignore it and um, try and block the person report it flag the content don't share it because if you share it a lot of people have this sort of idea that yeah. well it's not what I said so sure. I can't be held liable yeah. yeah but the truth of the matter is our courts have actually held time and time again that it's as if you said it yourself. Sure. So we must really be responsible when we're on social media. And um, there's also a second situation where you post something and you mm. try and spark debates, but some people get carried away and there might be bad and comments on your post. And now the uh, thing is, it's your responsibility by hosting that platform yeah. to control your posts and your sure. comments. Otherwise, you'll be held liable as a publisher. So, in short, so when we write statuses on Facebook or posts, rather, mm. as they say, these kids, we must be very attentive to what you post. Yes, exactly. Because that. the courts can find you liable now. Yes, as a publisher. And a good what? example is News24. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but they've changed the whole comments process time and time again, and they've refined it. Now you have to submit your comments to an editor first. Oh, before, before you get edited. Yeah. Just okay. like a newspaper. What? Just like a newspaper, yeah, exactly. Okay, interesting. You see, it's good to have the legal the team. Yes, Mitch Moore. Yeah, um, uh, a second topic I wanted to discuss was uh, the issue of online scams that we see more and more, uh, mm -hmm. again, on online, uh, mm -hmm. online shopping, booking, yeah. whatnot. Ooh. And that, we just say, uh, keep it locked here. He shall be back after this very, very fine Definitely song. Definitely for sure. All righty, guys, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to it. It is 14, 13, Saturday, the 10th of February. It is still the love month, and we decided to bring along Mitch. He's going to be our resident uh, legal side. He's still telling us a little bit more. Mitch, welcome back. Thanks, Junior. So sure. just uh, sticking on the topic of online things and uh, online shopping and booking, Yeah. Uh, there's a, an increase in online scams at the moment. Uh, even a family member of mine was scammed recently with online bookings. Sure. So just a quick tip to identify whether or not something is legit oh, nice. um, is the first thing to do is obviously look at the website address mm -hmm. uh, sometimes there's some sketchy things going on there often you'll find um, big companies I've seen an Anglo-American website mm. that says angloamericanrsa.com now naturally you'd think if it's a South African company you'd have .coza so mm. then you already know that there's something sure. dodgy there yeah. and a quick tip as well is to, to go to something called who is who is ZA or the ZACR on Google mm. so it's just a website who uh, who's ZA you type in the URL address and it gives you pretty much all the information about that website. It gives you the registrar's address, mm -hmm. the, the name of the person, the company, and it even tells you how long ago the website was created. So, I mean, if you're trying to buy goods and you see that a website was only created maybe a week or two ago, mm -hmm. that's an instant indicator that something dodgy is going on. Mm -hmm. Hey, guys, I hope you are really, really, really listening. You know, I haven't been a, you know, a fan of uh, uh, buying online, but we, you know our, our weekly job where we work, how online stuff are always coming through. But now, for the community that we're living in mm -hmm. around now, it is the most scariest thing to buy online. Like now personally, even like, you know, with the cars that we have, I, I prefer to have cash, you know, because with the scamming and everything that goes down, and especially where we live around, you know, Durban, we, we should know very well that there are big time hackers. You know, how can people prevent themselves from such? The easiest way to do it would just to be trusting reputable websites. Uh, a good example is obviously Take A Lot. Mm. So these big websites, they, they really invest in security and banking oh, details. Yes. They use payment processes like PayPal, which is it's well known. And sure. if something goes wrong, you can actually have You uh, can trace it back, exactly. yes. Exactly. Exactly. Or you can actually, which is, which is actually good, you know, So because most likely people, you know, these new websites that are scams uh, will offer you something more cheaper and you're going to instantly think that, mm. boom, I just got myself a like and can't you don't know that it's called you are like. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in shock. Like, I didn't even, I didn't even <laughs> check. Like, I mean, it's wonderful because I. So, you know, my Valentine's booking might be illegit illegitimate, eh? 
Sure, I don't know. You have to ask. There's much right here. He just no, gave, he just gave me the, the rundown how so to check. It's a sign so that I, if I my, my booking is illegitimate, then the relationship is illegitimate. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm thinking in my head. <laughs> Another giveaway, as always, with looking at email addresses, if the company's name comes before the at sign, so if it's like a company's name and then at gmail.com, you should be a bit skeptical because a Gmail account can be created in about 10 seconds and you can put fake details in. Of course. So in other words, if something is takelot at gmail.com, you know it's not takelot. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, then, thank you, Mitch. We are so informed right now. <laughs> All right. I hope everybody has been listening. Mitch is still in the building. He's still going to give us, a, you know, his last, 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 last statements. And uh, do not change that dial because hey, it's about to get interesting. I've never been blown away like this. And trust and believe, online shopping, guys, know what you're doing. That's all I'm saying.